So let's go to the word of God in the book of um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and say, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. <laughs> that is a powerful scripture. And this scripture was written when the spirit take Jesus to the mountain to be tempted. How many of you are facing that temptation right now? Sickness here. <laughs> Something's going on here. Every time you talk to somebody, <laughs> every time things taking place, they're facing that temptation right now. But the word tell us we're going to stand in the word of God. No matter what take place, no matter what coming our way, we don't need to compromise our truth and our holiness and our peace and our word and the name of Jesus. We still gonna stand for his word. The devil is a liar. Somebody say amen. There is no new trick from the enemy. We already know what the Bible say. You can see that. He came to kill, steal, and destroy it. He came. That means you had the power over him through the word of God. I don't know about you. When a thing takes place in my, in my, in my, around me in the atmosphere, oh, that tell me God is working. God is teaching me something. How to overcome thing is coming in my way. But I learned a long time ago, you gotta stand in the word of God. Somebody say amen. I'm not trying to cross your philosophy here today. Women, I'm telling you, you have the power of God in your head. You, you, when your, your husband's sick, loose that hair and shaking out over that sickness. And command that sickness to lose. That is the word. Oh, I'm going to go somewhere tonight. Because I know the devil is alive. Somebody say Amen. Because I know what the Bible say. And this time Jesus is fixing to go to the mountain to be tempted. Oh, the pickets may say the devil had. <laughs> Try the tempting God made him. Whew. Let me go to the book of James. James is the most powerful pastor in the New Testament. James have a heart. A pastor, just like our pastor. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. See, it's not the hair or the glory of the woman will change things around them, or angels show up. Is to submit a woman to God so they can be able to use the glory they have. See, sometimes the devil come to shut our mouth so we not say nothing what he's tried to do. Oh, come on. And that's what James says. Submit yourself, therefore, to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, you cannot resist the enemy or the devil if you, unless you submit. Connected with authority, connected with the word, connected with the power of the testimony is dwelling in you. Somebody say amen. When somebody tell me they're sick, they're going through something. Oh, that's where I get down my knees and I mention the name and I tell the devil to back off. You don't have no authority to attack somebody. I know in my heart. So somebody say amen. See, listen, I want to say something here. Maybe it's going to offend you tonight. When the enemy is striking in your camp, you need to get close to the word. You need to get a hold of that word. Because the only weapon, the devil, will not defeat you. It's through the word of God. No matter how rock the, 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 the boat you in it, no matter what take place in your life, you got to get a hold of that word so you can be able to ground it in what he said. 
This is another thing the devil hate. Did you ever get up in the morning and say, Praise God, you bless me today. For what? I have a joy in my heart. I have a dance in my feet. I don't have no headaches. I don't have no back pain. Oh, I just march in devil to remind you. God, give me a testimony to remind you. I'm an overcomer because I am holding to the word of God. Oh, this is another thing he's going to say. Take a little bit. Stay in your holiness. Don't compromise because the battle is still dress holy, still look holy, still act holy because you are click with the word what God is saying. Don't compromise the truth or the word when you go through the storm, when you go through the battle, when the thing coming up, still owning the word. You ready for this? And if you know you cannot pray, reach out to your brother. Reach out to your pastor, the first lady, or somebody who's going to pray for you. You might be laid down by the battle, but there's somebody is praying with you with the word of God. That's what God wants. Don't back off from the truth or compromise what we believe in it because you go with through the storm. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -mm. The Bible says, I want to go to heaven with the other hand cut off. With one hand, I hold on to the word and believe what God is saying. I'm here to remind you, church, we are standing together to fight the battle for anybody in our church, anybody they need help. We're going to stand with them through the word of God. We mind the enemy. We are overcoming. Jesus defeated you by the word. <laughs> I have an uncle just passed away two, two days ago. I have an auntie fighting her life. And everybody blew my phone up. I say, wait a minute. I am not God. You need to blow the kingdom of God in your knees. Fasting and pray and get a hold of the word of God so they can be able to answer prayer. Because I'm only me. Somebody say amen. I'm fighting my own battle. But I will pray for them. But I got to make sure I'm holding at the word when I stand for somebody. And they, they know my lifestyle. I'm not compromising. What I stand for. I'm not missing church for nothing. Because the enemy is coming my way. Unless I cannot get out, the bear like sick. I understand that people can't go through things. But you are the one who's strong. This is your night. This is your hours. This is your time to stand for them. They're weak and going through the sickness. But the only way we can stand with them, you gotta. Hold on that word. Because if you're not holding that word, you're going to compromise what you stand on, what you believe in. <laughs> Someone say amen. amen. <laughs> it's because I'm not in the church. I'm going to run, run in outside my house with a pair short or a tent top. Who am I? I can make sure I'm not compromised. But I'm standing on it because God will remind me who I am before him. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about Jesus defeat the enemy by his word. Every word come out of his mouth. Oh, the devil was angry. And I love when the devil is angry. That means I do something wrong. Somebody say amen. And I know he's angry. Because that phone will call me all the name in the world. Why you, why you always want to go to church? Why you always exciting? Why you always nothing happened to you? What is going on? I say, I'm still holding in the word. Because I read in the scripture, work my own salvation with fear and trembling. Somebody say amen. But this is what John say. I'm going to read John. Man, I'm excited what God is doing tonight. 
And, and I want to encourage all of you from my heart. And I talked to our pastor. It's, uh, it's going through this battle. But we need us as a church. This is our time. How many of you, pastor, have been feeding you Wednesday night? Sunday morning? Sunday night? <laughs> so when he's not here, are you going to sit back and wait until he show up? Or are you going to get down your knees and pray for him? Call him up? Hey, you want some soup, pastor? Help up the first lady? I'm, I'm not saying that's what they told me, but that's what I feel. Us as a church, this is our time to stand with them. This is our time to encourage him. This is our time to remind him, Pastor, you're not alone. We might be not understand what's going on with you, but you can count on me to stand with you. And I'm going to connect with the word of God to make sure I do my part to be that servant of the Lord that stand with you. Church, this is our time to rise up. If you have a help right now, you need to pray for them. They go going through something in their life. Even if you want to sacrifice your Friday night pizza, fasting a little bit. I am. So this is what John said. This, uh, this guy's John. Sometimes I say, man, John, are you crazy? Yeah. I, I always talk to myself, okay? okay? That's what I do. I work, pray, read the word, and laugh at myself about what God is trying to do. This is what John said. John 1, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. What John say, when God speak to the mankind or the dust, he breathed in it, that breath coming and made a man. To what? To his Word. <laughs> they kind of made us on the, the, the dirt. He made us on the dust. Because the dust is easy to move. There's the dust going. That's what God wants us to move when He moves. That's what God wants us to move when He's stepping in. But if you're just standing there, you're just like a dirt. But we need to become like the dust. So the word that become and manifest over you so you can be able to step in. in. Where are you stepping at? Step into faith. Yes, yes. Because the only way they please God is through faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. Somebody say amen. amen. And it's the crazy. You can step in faith, but if you don't understand the time you're stepping in, Because the scriptures say, now faith. That's the word now that means Wednesday night, not tomorrow. Oh, wait until I, I got so many people come in and I will help. No, no, no. Now, faith is a subject, a thing, hope for the evidence, a thing not seen. That's crazy. The word of God. So let me finish up so I can get you home early. Somebody say amen. But I want to I wanna remind you, this is our time, church. Don't look at the empty seat. Look at what the Word say. Those empty seat, there are angels sitting there and listen to God's people. You, you know what the angels sit in the church, in the building? Because they're looking. This is Jesus. It's coming for his wife. And he's sitting there. He's prepared us yeah. for his coming. Yeah. Because he's going to come for the church. That is his wife. That's why angels around us. Yeah. 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 Somebody say amen. Yeah. Because they're looking at us. Because somewhere when the time comes, Jesus is going to show up. Guess what happened? Yeah. We become his wife. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. It's not going to go right in our flesh. But in the spirit, I know how they're going to go, right? Because the Bible says so we're going to worship him in his throne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sister, sister here is not going to go, hey, how are you doing? in heaven? They're not going to do that. They're just going to worship God. Yeah. They're, they're just going to worship God. That's what the Bible says. So we need to live that way in the soul. 
We can come as a body, as a flesh, but we need to be in the spirit. Because the only way you understand the word of God is through his spirit. There's no other way. So it's the verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. What is in the beginning? The word. The word. It never changed. Hello, somebody. But we wanted to do a lot of change. You gotta change this. You gotta change that. Wait a minute. If you stand in the word of God, it's automatic you're supposed to be changed. Because that's the only way God working is to us to change. There's no other way. I don't care how beautiful you are or handsome I am, it's not changed the word of God. Number three, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I carry this little book everywhere I go, because this book tells me the doctrine is in my heart. And our doctrine is the most powerful message in the face of this earth. There's no other doctrine out there. And what is doctrine? The teaching of the pastor, the disciple, the teaching of our pastor to the church. <laughs> there is no doctrine out there for us to speak in tongue. Why you have a problem for that? I want to confuse the devil. I speak in more tongue. And now only the devil gets this one. If I want to confuse my mind all day long, I'm speaking in tongue all night. Because my mind is not there. But I'm in the Holy Ghost. If you, go, if you have a problem going to sleep or rest, so open your mouth, start speaking in tongues. Soon you're in heaven. Oh, where am I? You're not in that your child or somebody hurt you. Your mind is already connected in the heavenly place. You have a problem with sleeping, speaking in tongues. And you're going to come and say, hey, it work, it work. Because you confuse your flesh, your mind, confuse the devil and everything you're going through every day because you're in a heavenly place. That's the part of the One time I speak in the tongue, people think I'm speaking Spanish. They think I'm speaking small. I need to con connect it with God. One thing going in my life, I know how to approach God through the word. I glitch into the word. Because I know what the word is saying. Now I'm going to close with this. Tonight as a church, we need to come together as the body. Because we have so many people in our family, they're going to miss out when Jesus show up. But do you know we live in a time all these things taking place and fixing the show up? This is our time, church, to make you a list for every people in your family. They will not serve God. They will not have this truth. All your friends, everybody you know of them in your mind, write it down there and start praying for them. For their soul and for their wisdom, for their knowledge, for the coming of the Lord. You doing your prayer, the angels send a message, or somebody out there is going to witness to them because you are standing in the cap for them. That's what the word of God is saying. Stand in the cap for them. Do not know the truth. As a church, all this going on is it's just a spirit. Mark my word. You're going to find that out when you attack. I hate sickness. I told sickness every morning, me and you not get along. But it's not the sickness. It's face people. It's not the spirit face people. You want me to tell you? It's the word called pain. Whenever pain in your body, that's why you know you got sick. So you got to pray for that pain. It's facing you. Unless you know the sickness and you tell God to remove our way from you.
Why you got to pray for that pain? If you have a pain in your back, pray for that pain. Because the pain is the reason why people reacting what the enemies try to do. Somebody say amen. So we need to stand as a church and believe we're living in the end time. This message, we need to tell somebody. <laughs> let me help you a little bit. Sister Erica, you can come up here. Let, let me help you a little bit here. Sometimes we feel like it, we hurt somebody when we tell them the truth. Do you know the Bible said truth hurt? I want somebody to tell me the truth. Because if they tell me the truth, it's going to help me and save me. But if you just say, oh, you got a nice haircut, Matthew. You're good. <laughs> somebody say, man, there's nothing wrong with that. Sorry, Matthew, your dad cut your hair, but you're supposed to come to me, so sorry. <laughs> Somebody say, man, we need to stand for this truth. So the word of God is already written for you and me to stand on it. And in the verse 5, or the verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. This is the light of God. This is the light of God. My eighth grade graduation, this is what my pastor in the island gave it to me. I still kept it. I have a Bible, my grandma gave it to me. Because sometimes, did you ever go through something? This is what I do. I, I lay the word and I stand in the word. I say, God, I stand in your word. Let the spirit through me. Because the only way that word's working through the spirit. There's a woman fight cancer in California. It's a preacher fighting cancer. Stay forward. And we're bringing her, stand in that word. And we see the cancer melt out of her body. I'm here to tell you, church, we have the revelation in Jesus' name. And the word of God to stand on it and believe what he said. We need to encourage one another. We need to stand one another for the word of God. And believe what God's going to do. Because I believe in what God said. Don't compromise the truth. Stand in your holiness. Stand in the word of God. Stand in the truth. Stand and believe you have the Holy Ghost. Stand and believe you have the word of God. We live in a time that enemies try to do everything. The church. So what are we going to do about it? Do you know there is a miracle for somebody's waiting for and you have it but you not even have the revelation understanding about that miracle you have it for somebody or healing? Because if the Holy Ghost is inside of us who can stop us? The only one that's going to stop us is us. Well I don't feel good to pray for that person. That's good. You not feel good but God called you. To pray for that person. Oh, I might be do something wrong for that. No, no, no. If you obey God, God's going to step in up. Because he want your hand. He want your mouth. He want your feet. He want everything of you to be used in the end time. So as a church today, let's stand in the word. My title today, Feed Your Mind, God's Word. I love that. I speak the word of God over my mind every morning. I speak the word of God over my body. I prophesy over. I speak the word of God over my son's life. My family. My pastor. Family. The church. I speak the word of God. Because that's what God is saying. If we overcome everything in this world. You got to overcome by the word of God. Nothing else. And I speak over my day. Brother Joe, you are a happy person this morning. Yeah, I just have a relationship with Jesus. And I'm not leaving him over there where I pray. I'm taking him with me. It's him. Feed your mind in God's word.